All right, it's 6.30. We will call the meeting to order, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening, everyone. I guess I have to ask you to do stuff, sure, right? absolutely. Roll call, Superintendent Larson. Uh, Olam. Yes. Odie. Yes. Saxer. Yes. Telcott. Yes. Scott. Yes. Quorum. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, if there are no changes to the agenda that need to be made tonight, I would entertain a motion to approve that as presented, please. Second. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. No conflict of interest disclosure or waiver requests. And I didn't hear about anything coming from the community tonight, so that takes us to our general business items. Administration reports, Superintendent Larson. Did you get back in? I did not. You'll get me. That's fine. It's password links. Never mind. Are you good? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a few items uh, to update you on uh, here this evening. Uh, Inspiration Elementary School construction uh, continues. Have some photos to show uh, later in the board report. Uh, July 30th, substantial completion. August 13th, punch list completed. Uh, staffing progress is also uh, still underway. Uh, budget process, obviously you know all of, the, all of the procedural items that we have worked through. The next big ticket item is July 12th. We will have our public budget hearing and potential action on uh, the, the budget. Uh, pandemic response plan. I uh, just want to note some summer protocols. Um, there's no change for individuals that are exhibiting, exhibiting symptoms on site. Uh, the daily individual health screening process, I would note we are asking all participants to complete that at home prior to coming to facilities. We are not going to administer um, that uh, health screening process on site like we did throughout the school year. So we're asking all participants and attendees to do so at home. Uh, student con close contact protocols. Uh, summer close contact tracing will look a little bit different than it did uh, this, uh, this last school year. And a lot of that has to do with capacity and the fact that we don't have the staffing to do it in the way that we did previously. So it'll look a little bit differently, uh, but we will work with the Department of Health uh, when we have an exposure. The other item that's important to note is we will inform the group or the activity in the event that there is an exposure that occurs so that they can monitor their uh, child symptoms, four symptoms. Uh, upcoming pandemic response planning uh, will occur in July and then we will um, we'll communicate uh, whatever mitigation strategies are found to be necessary through that committee work that will be communicated out uh, the week of August 2nd. We will not start our planning process until uh, July, the week of July 12th, and then August 2nd, we'll communicate uh, that out to our respective families. Uh, Distance Learning Academy, uh, as previously presented, uh, main, uh, maintains its, uh, its on-track status. High school addition, again, uh, we say these things over and over and over again to make certain that the message is clear and consistent and also spreads uh, within our community. Uh, general high school, school classrooms, ground floor special education, um, uh, classroom space, science lab space are the priorities within our high school addition. You can see the timeline here for your review. Ultimately looking at a bid uh, here this, uh, this upcoming winter uh, construction for one school year and then open for uh, the 2023-24 school year. Summer lunch program is uh, ready to roll. Uh, that will begin in June. It'll be grab and goes on Tuesdays. That information was included uh, recently in an email to all of our respective families, uh, including the um, pickup locations and the timing. A couple of school board items to note. There are a few policy items. I just want to uh, make certain that you're aware of that will be coming. Um, public school exemption, participation in extracurricular activities, that policy will be coming. At this point, Associated School Board, School Administrators of South Dakota and South Dakota Department of Education are working together um, 
they plan to put out some guidance and frequently asked questions in a document to uh, schools here in early June. So um, that will help guide us in uh, the modification and or creation of policy regarding public school exemption and their allowed participation in extracurricular activities. Uh, the other item I just want to note, medical cannabis. Uh, so recently, the South Dakota uh, Board of Education um, reviewed and adopted administrative rules. That now works through the joint rules committee process. Um, long story short, I want to make certain that you're aware that the recommendation uh, from my office will be that we will take the most conservative approach allowed and outlined within administrative rule regarding um, medical cannabis. Uh, I have met with our school nurses and discussed the situation. It's complex. It's a bit of a winding road for a variety of reasons. Uh, but what I do want you to know is that within my recommendation and what I will bring forward for policy, uh, Brandon Valley staff will not administer medical cannabis. Only the registered designated caregiver will be permitted to administer medical cannabis and also medical cannabis will not be stored on school property. So those are really the two main bullet points that I would um, just advise you of. You'll be seeing that policy here in the, over the course of the next couple of months as it has to be in place uh, prior to uh, the start of the school year. Uh, with that, there will be a school board election that will occur on Tuesday, June 15th. Two seats open, candidates in alphabetical order by last name, Greg Odie, Kerry Roberts, Nick Scott. The annual meeting will be held on Monday, July 12th. Please mark your calendar uh, for that date. The budget hearing will be at 6 p.m. And the business meeting, the annual business meeting will occur at 6.30 p.m. Excited to collaborate with Siouxland Library and our local pizza ranch here for our Link Summer Reading Program. Uh, the summer reading uh, goals for each of our respective group of kids is outlined uh, for your review. would certainly encourage our kids to find a good book and do some leisure reading here this summer. Uh, child Nutrition Services, again, that waiver has been extended and we anticipate free meals for all of our children for next school year. Our Share Our Strength grant, again, uh, has been approved, and that, uh, that covers the cost of that registered dietitian as we work collaboratively with area schools and provide CNS directorship services. Uh, some calendar items to note. It's never too early to say it out loud. The bus passes will be available July 6th through the 30th. Uh, it is going to be critical that families uh, buy, their, buy their bus pass in that window as next year's uh, beginning of the year transportation services. Uh, we will have a lot going on with the addition of a new school, altered boundary lines, um, updated routing, those various types of things. So um, that's really the, the first item that we think about in terms of the next calendar year that our, our parents, guardians, and families need to be aware of. With that, August 18th, new staff in service, the 19th in service and workshop, 23rd and 24th are both in service and workshop, and August 25th, 2021 is our first day of school with kids for next year. Uh, a couple of photos of our uh, construction project. Here's the signage that is um, located uh, in front of the elementary school. I would note it's a little lower to the ground than what most of our signage is, and that's in accordance with Sioux Falls uh, City uh, Ordinance and Code. So uh, that's why that sign looks a little bit different than our other our other buildings, but there you have uh, there you have the exterior signage. Uh, moving through the project, uh, the front entrance bus loop is receiving its uh, asphalt here. I would note they put the second lift of asphalt on our on our parking lot, and we will uh, be starting to see the the paint go down for parking spaces, bus loop, um, delineation, etc. Uh, here you can see the front entrance, so the storefront has gone in. Uh, the tin on the outside of the building has started to go up. It's not yet on the front entrance, but uh, that's, what, uh, that's what that'll look like. The canopy will be, I believe, covered in that red, uh, red fascia tin. Uh, front office area. Um, no real changes other than uh, increased uh, carpet is going in, flooring is going in. Um, finishes are going in, those various types of things. 
uh, front, office, front office conference room. Uh, gymnasium water fountain water uh, bottle filling station. Uh, here's a picture of the music room. It does note carpet completed. I would note the carpet base uh, is not in. So that would be the next step in that room to really finish it out um, in terms of carpeting as the carpet base needs to go in. Uh, restroom in the girls commons. Girls' restroom in the Commons. Excuse me. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't noticed yet, you're going to see a reoccurring theme in this building. There is a whole lot of red and black, and you're also going to see um, some large signage within our common spaces that say links and those various types of things. Uh, library and media center. This is an image of the kindergarten wing. This would be the kindergarten classroom. So these rooms are basically waiting on uh, like carpet base and the vinyl base, smart, um, smart board installation, those various types of things. Beyond that, they're very close to basically being ready to be um, ready, ready to be occupied. First through fourth grade wing, um, they are just working today on uh, links in large letters in this respective area here. So that was exciting to see that, that progress. Uh, this is the outside sink area in um, the, first of, uh, the first through fourth grade classroom. There's restrooms on either end of, of that wing. And then here is a first through fourth grade classroom. Uh, floors are prepped up and they'll be starting to move through with carpet in the first through fourth grade wing here um, over the course of the next couple weeks. And then this is just a shot of the exterior on the north side. The biggest reason I put this in is so you can see the color of tin that will cover um, a majority of the upper level. Um, there is some red highlights throughout the building uh, on the exterior, but most of it will be that um, tan color. With that, would certainly entertain any questions that you have. Thank you, Superintendent Larson. Um, next up, board policy uh, discussion items. The first one we have is DDB, the allowable costs for federal funds. Uh, yes, so Madam Chair, all three of these items are um, ultimately necessary in accordance to um, fed federal funding that we receive in terms of Title I. Uh, we have had school districts throughout the state that have gone through um, basically audits with the Department of Education, and these were policies that they were directed to put into place um, if they didn't have them. So we're taking action now to put them into place prior to uh, our next audit. I don't even have that scheduled date of that, but these would be necessary uh, in accordance to that. Uh, pretty straightforward in terms to in terms of allowable costs. I'll, I would even speak to the cash, cash management for federal um, for the federal funding as well as the Title I Part A uh, supplements plan. All necessary in accordance to uh, that federal funding that we receive in terms of Title I, which is about a hundred and thirty-five or forty thousand um, dollars. Biggest ticket item that I would say is it outlines what we can spend the money on. It outlines how we will. Um, process, procedurally keep track of that, those funds. And then the last one, DDD, really basically says that Brandon Elementary is a Title I elementary school. They get all the same stuff that Robert Bennis and um, Fred Asim and Valley Springs get, even though those other three don't receive title funds. Those Title I funds supplement the program that we have. So um, there's a, there's a, 
a mathematical process for teacher ratios, budget ratios, curriculum, all that stuff um, that's uh, clearly outlined in that policy. Uh, you'll see the first reading come back uh, in June, and then obviously the second reading um, later, in, uh, later in June at our second meeting. So with that, in terms of discussion, it's really a high level overview of those three respective items. Would certainly entertain you any questions you have on those respective items, and uh, we'll read them aloud for you at our first reading. All right, thank you. Um, and with policy, if there's ever any question, just let Superintendent Larson know. Uh, he can usually answer those questions for, for us before um, the proposed first reading, so that would be great. Thank you. That takes us to our general business section. I would entertain a motion to approve general business items one through five, please. So, okay. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Personnel, consent approval. I would entertain a motion to approve items one through 21 as presented, please. So moved. Okay. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Items 22 to 26 are information only for your review. That takes us to our communication section. There are multiple thank you notes there to the Board of Education for uh, looks like most of it is um, recognition of years of service and the virtual banquet and gifts that they that staff received so please review that when you have a chance board reports uh, does anyone have a formal the bo formal board report that they would like to share tonight Okay, just roughly going over it, um, we discussed what we did last year in the 2021 school year and some of the high points were th that we eliminated that in-district elementary open enrollment transportation as well as we used more centralized um, pickups, which really, in a nutshell, speeded up getting kids from or to school and uh, alleviated a lot of um, a lot of problems. Um, for next year, we're looking at no transportation available for students outside their assigned boundary. This includes third grade students, but they're allowed to stay in their local. Um, location at, for their, where their siblings go. Um, this coming year, starting July 1st, we are adding an additional um, uh, person out at the transportation bus barn to help with um, transportation issues as far as phone and <coughs> other paperwork. Um, like Jared earlier stressed about um, the next year's transportation, um, there's going to be several <clears throat> several communications throughout the summer, but let me tell you that if you do not, and I, I repeat, do not get your, your kids enrolled in transportation to be picked up, they will not be able to be picked up till October 4th. Not two weeks after school started, but October 4th. So, and that is just because we've got a new school online and we're just trying to get everybody um, settled down before we add any more um, confusion to the mix. So let me stress again, get your kids registered as far as transportation. Um, and then there's going to be um, other, like driver training will be August 16th and 17th and mailings will be given out and <clears throat> Um, school starts August 25th, but another thing what we're doing is we're, if you note there, uh, junior kindergarten and kindergarten kids are going to be starting two days later. This is to get the dust settled for the first two days before we add a little bit more confusion to the mix. I mean, we want to get everybody to the rooms, but uh, let's get the older kids where they know where we're going before we bring them young ones on board. Um, 
that's all I had. If there anybody have anything else? Uh, no, Madam Chair, I would just note that um, through all of the challenges associated with COVID, there were some, there were some certainly some positive things that we were able to take away. And one of those items was um, having our kindergartners, our, having our young learners, youngest learners, brand new to the building, um, have open house with their parents and their teacher for a longer established period of time on the Wednesday and Thursday prior to starting the school year. Uh, it made that first uh, that first real real day of school drop off a whole lot easier for parents and kids. But in addition to that, the un another un additional unintended consequence that was really positive was transportation ran a lot smoother because those five-year-olds that don't have any idea where they're going, um, they, they basically, we get two days of transportation under our belts before they get added to the mix. So um, elementary principals asked if we could do that again. Uh, their teachers were uh, overwhelmingly in favor of having the two days of open house so they could meet with their uh, parents and their kiddos and get them settled. And uh, ultimately, we're going we're gonna to give that a go again for, for next year. So um, it's just one item to note that that happened because of our response to COVID. And uh, that's a practice that we look to maybe continue um, uh, in the future in addition to next year, but next year is going to be really our first pilot year during what we perceived, perceived to be a more normal year. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any report that they would like to share tonight? All right, hearing none, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you everyone for coming.